to have Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, if you have a total Christ in you, uh, there's not much of anything else left. If Christ in you, you're, there's not much of you left because he, he's pretty big. Christ in you, Christ in, not Christ for you, Christ in you. And Paul said, this is a hidden, hidden mystery. He said, the riches of the glory, riches, because of course it's everything, you've got Christ, you've got everything. The glory, you can't have more than the, per God, the perfect God living in you and expressing himself by you, you being means by which other people can, uh, can find him as you found him. You can't have more than that. It's the riches of the glory of this mystery, just Christ in you. And he went on saying, uh, he went on uh, in that scripture, warning every man, teaching man, every man, that he may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So this is completion. Perfection is completion. I'm here to present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, he says. Now I saw that years ago. Uh, at, at that time, you see, it wasn't real to me. That's why I had to find that. I knew Christ for me. I knew Christ as my Lord. But to say he lived permanently in me, in the real way, what lives in you is really what you are, like your profession lives in you, it's what you really are. Now, if, if, if he lives in me, then what, what, what I really am is he, I'm just a means for which this person is operating. I didn't know that. I didn't know that Christ in you in that sense. I went to, to Africa, and I was taking Jesus Christ to the Africans, as I told you. Now, I knew about taking Jesus Christ to the Africans. But then I found a scripture, another scripture, which got me, started me on this pursuit, as you might say. But of course, uh, when you pursue the things of God, you find them. It isn't pursuing and not finding, it's pursuing and finding. It really finds you, of course. Uh, and the, the, uh, what I found was a scripture in Galatians 4.19, where Paul spoke about converts. My little children, for my travel in birth uh, again, until Christ be formed, until I travel in birth, until Christ be formed in you. Oh, I said, that's different. It's as if he lived kind of, talk, was talking kind of baby, uh, em, embryo language, birth language, travel in birth. It's as if an embryo Christ became a fully formed Christ in you. Oh, I said, that's different. If Christ is a fully formed Christ in person, I say, that's not much different to that person except as a means of expressing Christ. I don't know that, I said. I said, I'm not even bringing that to Africans. I'm bringing, bringing Christ to the Africans, hoping they may get a thing called eternal life. But this is making a new kind of person. See, I found the whole purpose of God is to give us a thing called eternal love. It's to, it's to be, that we should be expressing of eternal love, which is himself. And he's being re-expressing his eternal quality of life by us. I didn't understand that at that time. Formed in me. Especially for Bobby, I didn't understand that. I, I, I noticed it too. We had, a, we had a leader at that time, a man who fired our mission, a great soldier of Jesus called C.C. Studd. He had his free way of saying things. We were very few in those days, only eight or ten of us, and we had this huge Detroit forest, about a thousand miles of it and then the villages all around the forest. We'd go out in the villages and meet them, then we'd come, come together, of course, and have fellowship and pray together. And when we were together, he had a way of saying things sometimes. And one thing, thing we would say was this, he says, Lord, I'm out here to see Jesus Christ running about inside black bodies. Well, said, that's, that's one way of putting it. See, not Jesus Christ come, come, running about in, that's the same thing. If Jesus Christ is running about in you, then that's all there is. He, he, your, your black body, your white body is showing him running about in you, that's all. Same idea. Now, I had to get some things through the scripture into me in focus to get this, to get this, to get this in focus. Uh, uh, the first consequence was like me, I didn't feel I had all I wanted to. Now, I'm talking to you like that. If you feel what you've got, if you've got all you want, I'm saying, all right, God bless you. I, you, you better go to sleep. You had anything here this afternoon. If you don't feel you've got all you want to, then I'll talk to you. If you feel you're forgiven, accepted, love, but you've got all you want, the power, peace, victory, complete satisfaction, so that all the bells ring, uh, joy unspeakable, and peace apart. And you can't say, no, that, then I can talk to you, because I was like that. So there I was in Africa, but I felt I needed to be made better. I felt I needed a much greater quality of love to identify myself with these simple Africans in their villages. I felt I needed a power, something could happen when I took Jesus to them. It wasn't like a bouncing a ball against the wall and bouncing back at you. I felt I needed faith that something could happen. It seemed so dark, because we're all dark, we know each other, but it seemed so dark. And then contentions with fellow missionaries and, and, and judgmentalism and negativism and test, question of, of temptation of the flesh. I was a common human. So I said, I'm not the, I, I, the adequate person I ought to be. I'm not the uh, adequate representative of Jesus Christ I ought to be to people. I'm partial. I'm not quite satisfied. I have tensions and fears and difficulties. How am I not handling? 
So I thought I needed more. Not only the Africans needed more, I needed more. So I set out on a search. I a search, I told you, an inward person. I didn't mean out a search. I mean, all we missions, of course, tired of early morning time with time with God. We lived in b b bamboo mud huts like an African. In the early morning, we have our time with God alone, where we read the Bible and, uh, and uh, pray and commit. That's why I talk about uh, uh, time of search. Now, in those times, I'd say, God, God, give me more. Make me more loving. Make me more powerful. Make me more victorious. More released. Make me a better kind of person. Now, I didn't know I made it, that I was under big illusion. I didn't understand my illusion then. I thought I could be improved. I find the human self can never be improved. Oh, I didn't know that one. I'll tell you why I knew that. I didn't know that then. I thought, he must improve me. I must have more, I must have more victory, I must have, I must have, I must have all this stuff. So, in my quiet time, of course, I'd be taking it to him. And then one day, he startled me with a very simple word. As I say, the Bible comes out from the Bible, the Spirit makes it real to you, it comes alive to you. And he took a very simple word from Scripture and made it alive to me. The word was, God is love. Well, we all know that, don't we? Three words. God is love. But when the, it's in the book. When the Spirit takes it, it makes it real. And what it meant to me is, oh, if God is love, then love's a person. It doesn't say God has love. I thought love was a power that God had and put in me, and here I'd be loving. It suddenly says, God is love. And I said, love, universal love, universal, every atom love each other. Insects love each other. Life's full of desire, love, desire, whatever form it takes. Maybe itself or whatever form, love. He is love. So I said, love's a person. I said, he's a universal person. So I had to get a new, idea, a new concept of God, not just, not just a person up there. He's both individual and universal. That's both there, but he loves everywhere. But it's a person, a person, a person. It's as if God said to me, love isn't a thing I give you, because love isn't a thing. I am that love. Wasn't my name always I am, my day in Moses' days? I am, I am, not I have. Well, I said, sitting in my hut, as it were, that's rather selfish of me. You got the lot and got left, left none for me. You're the lot and poor me, what about poor me? I need some love too. You know the way you talk, uh, just between yourselves, as it were, to God. I need power. And I found another scripture came to me. In one Corinthians 1, now Christ is the power, not has it. Christ is the power. Power is a person. Well, power is very universal. It's atomic the power. Power is universal. Christ is the power. So power is a person. So I began to get a new fact that God's a universal person. Now, it's very difficult to see, first of all, because we're so used to seeing, uh, because we got separated through the fall, that God's up there when he is up there. He's, uh, it says he's uh, uh, um, above all and through all and in you. That's what the phrase is used of God. He's above all and through all and in all. So I've got to begin to find a God whose who spirit, who's not just a person sitting in the throne up there or there. He's, uh, somehow God's going to strip him. He's a universe. He is, he is. And you find him anywhere, everywhere. He's there, he's there. He's the love. He's the power. But you see, the problem it meant to be was, I thought I had the power. I must have the power. I must have the faith. I must have the victory. I must have it. And it seems if he stole the, stole the lot and none, left none for me. That was my, this gap. Of course, he was teaching me something about that. So there I was. I learned this. Uh, he's love. He's power. God is my peace. He doesn't have peace. God's my peace. God is, the Bible says, God is my exceeding joy. God's my joy. It's not a thing. God's the joy. God's the peace. Uh, and then I finally find the scripture which fits a whole lot together. The first scripture, in the beginning God, that's all there is then, in the beginning God, that's Genesis 1. And way at the end, when the end comes, and it says the last enemy has been destroyed is death, this is in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, the thing finishes. What does it say? It says, Jesus Christ, the Son, the Son should render up the kingdom of the Father, that God may be all in all. Well, what more? If it's all he is in some, if he's all in all, he is all in all his forms. So actually, that's true now, you see it. Everything is really a form of him, maybe a created outer form, or maybe a person who can express him. All in all, isn't that a statement? Not some in all. All in all, that is. And when you have eyes, the spiritual eyes, you say, 